So as we've seen, Kaido is described as the strongest, most durable creature alive. He is so strong that you could almost say he's invincible, but he's not exactly immortal. Because as you can see here, he did say that when he fell from Sky Island that it did some damage, but it was very minuscule. Many people have tried to describe this immortality or invincibility through the ageless surgery of the past user of the OP OP Nomi. And a lot of people have said that it could be some kind of magic that, or some kind of curse that was put on him that keeps him from dying. Now these don't seem plausible because if he actually can't die then that would kind of ruin the plot of this story. Um, but also, immortality would not really describe why he can't die. The ageless surgery only keeps him from aging, and as we've seen, Kaido looks pretty old, so that would only describe why he can't age, it wouldn't describe why he's so powerful or why, why he's so durable. And as we all know, everything's usually described through hockey or uh, devil fruit, so I doubt it's any sort of magic or any sort of outside um, source. So the real explanation is not that he's immortal, but that he's nearly invincible and has figured out a secret to become so durable and strong to the point where he's almost undefeatable. It's been said that if Kaido's in a 1v1 ever, always bet on him, so chances are he has such high durability and strength that in a 1v1, Kaido will always stand victorious. So after looking at the gifters, you could actually see that they have these black tattoos on their arm, and they actually have these uh, big black horns. And Kaido on the same arm has a bl big black tattoo that has sort of a dragon, sort of tribal tattoo. And yeah, we've seen some other guys with tattoos on their arms, like we've seen a guy from Shanks Crew who also had a tattoo, but this is not like Kaido's tattoo. This tattoo has like a dragon actually on it, but Kaido actually has dragon scales on his tattoo, almost like the other gifters. So this pattern isn't so much an animal itself, but it resembles uh, the pattern of an animal's fur or its texture almost. So since Kaido kind of meets all these requirements, wouldn't it make sense to say that he is a gifter or that he has eaten a artificial devil fruit, aka a smile? So from that you could assume that he could have some kind of dragon ability since he has dragon skills on his arm. But I do not think that he is limited to one smile because that would be kind of weak for a Yonko. But also there is a lot of evidence to say otherwise. First, I do still think he is a Typhon. There is just so much evidence for it and if you haven't seen my video already on this, I suggest you check it out before continuing anything else in this video because it won't maybe make that much sense to you if you don't fully accept the idea yet. But to summarize the main points, in Greek mythology there was a group of witches and they were called the Mori and they were able to thread the strings of fate. And this group managed to trick the Typhon by giving him ephemeral fruits that were able to promise him power and all these abilities. And in this story you could compare a lot of it to Doflamingo because these, this group called the Mori, they had one eye, and as we know, Doflamingo seems to be blind in one eye. Even when we look at his flag, it has an eye crossed out. So this, there's a lot of connections to the Mori with Doflamingo, and also the fact that they were actually controlled a physical string that would that was tied to your fate. And Doflamingo, he obviously has the string fruit, and he also controls the fate of the black market in a way. Because when he was defeated, everything went into complete chaos. And these ephemeral fruits are very similar to the artificial zone fruits that Doflamingo gives to Kaido. And these fruits are not just said to be limited to his army only. These fruits could very well be eaten by Kaido himself. And another similarity is that the Typhon, also named the King of Beasts, he gave birth to an army of monsters and beasts. And Kaido is pretty much the same way. He gave birth to an army of beasts through the smile fruits and, and giving birth to these gifters who were able to transform into beasts and monsters. So I have this crazy idea that makes a lot of sense though. Smile does not have a devil in it, so you could technically eat as many smiles as you want. It has not been yet established if you could eat only one. So wouldn't it sort of make sense if Kaido ate a hundred of these smiles, thus why he's called 100 Beast Kaido? The interesting part about this is that we were introduced to Kaido and given his name around the same time smiles were introduced to the story, so it's possible that he was that he was named this after he had eaten all these smiles. That's why we never heard of Kaido before all this uh, smile business happened. And also, I don't think he's limited to just one smile, because if you look at his tattoo, it's much more predominant on him than any other gifter. Usually it just takes up the lower part of their arm, whereas with Kaido, it takes up his entire arm and his chest. And also, the Minx actually described the gifters and the, the army that Jack had as being zombies almost, because of their smiles. So if smiles give you this sort of durability that allows you to endure many hits, sort of like Moria's army, then it would make sense if smiles 
are what give Kaido his huge durability and it's what makes him nearly invincible. So on top of him having a Typhon fruit that could be awakened, he would also have a hundred smiles that'll give him more durability on top of his devil fruit awakening. As Crocodile already said that zone devil fruit awakenings give you higher durability and endurance on a whole different scale. So it would look kind of weird if he had a hundred smiles just in one body. So that's why I think the Typhon fruit is still a possibility because if he has the Typhon fruit, Typhons have hundreds of heads that come out of their bodies, a hundred of snake heads, serpent heads. So each one of these heads could actually have eaten a smile and will have its own unique animal head or form as shown on the screen above. And this would also be able to boost Kaido's speed and power because he could use like a cheetah for example, he could use a cheetah's speed on his legs where he could turn his legs into cheetah legs and he could be able to run at the speed of like Luchi. Um, of course, much, much faster. He could keep up with Bounce Man. He could even keep, keep up with Luffy's maybe fast form of Gear Fourth. He could change his arm into a Rhinoceros, for example, and he could use that as like a weapon almost um, when he's not in his full Typhon form. So then you may ask yourself, how, how is Luffy going to be able to beat Kaido if that's the case? So I think sort of like how Crocodile was as um, when we first saw Crocodile as a warlord, we thought Luffy was not going to be able to beat Crocodile because he was too strong. Luffy was a complete newbie at this time. Um, and Crocodile was a veteran pretty much and he was a warlord so I think that much like with the fight with Crocodile Kaido will have a huge weakness and Luffy will be able to exploit this sort of how he exploited Crocodile's weakness of being weak to moisture and that weakness is, is that Smile is extremely dangerous and radioactive I think that Doflamingo just like the Moirai in the stories of the Typhon the Moirai trapped the Typhon by turning these um, ephemeral fruits into these weapons almost uh, against him. They did give him strength, however, they actually weakened him in the long run. And we know Doflamingo does not like Kaido, he's afraid of Kaido. He, he and Caesar do not really appreciate Kaido in any way, shape, or form. Doflamingo did say in the past that he wants to be able to be king of the world, he wants to dominate everyone, so Kaido is one of the biggest obstacles in his way right now, so it makes sense if Kaido were also his biggest enemy. And since Kaido relies on his smiles, it'd be very easy to sabotage these smiles um, or put some kind of poison in them that would weaken Kaido over time to where he doesn't really notice. And once again, it's very clear that smiles are not safe because if you look at the sad vault, which is what smiles are made out of, this stuff is radioactive. It's, it's poisonous almost. And if we look at Kaido's tattoo, it has a skull on it. And this isn't like Kaido's um, Jolly Roger. His Jolly Roger looks a little bit like a skull, but it has horns, but this is just a plain skull. So it would make sense if this is almost an indication of danger for him, and the fact that it's taking over his whole body. Radiation spreads through your body, so this would make sense. But overall, the biggest problem you might have with this is the fact that you might think it's unfair to put Kaido at such a disadvantage, but if you think about it, Luffy's gears are the exact same since the gears damage his body over time. So if he comes up with a gear fifth technique, and on top of Gear 4th also hurting his body, it will really put a strain on him. So I think it would even out the playing field if Kaido is also being weakened by this huge amount of power he's getting from all these smiles plus his awakened zone devil fruit. And lastly, we know Caesar knows the secret behind smiles since he creates the sad for it, which is the key ingredient. So I think if Caesar ends up joining Luffy, or even if he doesn't join Luffy, or he just becomes like a temporary ally or, has to, or is forced into feeding them information, then I think he will tell Luffy the weakness to smile, which can help Luffy overall beat Kaido in the long run. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Give this video a thumbs up if you agree, share it wherever, and I'll see you guys later.